In hyperthyroidism, you look for symptoms such as anxiety and insomnia. You also look for palpitations, heat intolerance, increased perspiration, weight loss, and also a decreased appetite. On physical exam, you want to look for goiter, hypertension, tremors involving fingers and hands, hyperreflexia, proximal muscle weakness, lid lag, and sometimes it can even manifest as atrial fibrillation. Step 1 or step 2 won't be as obvious as telling you that there is proximal muscle weakness. However, they may disguise it as telling you that the patient has difficulty with combing their hair, they may have weakness getting into or out of their chairs, but their clinical presentation will not just be presented as myopathy. The patient should have multiple features suggesting hyperthyroidism like all the ones I mentioned earlier. Other types of myopathy can be due to drugs maybe, for example the patient could be taking glucocorticoids, or it could be connective tissue disease, such as polymyositis and dermatomyositis. Endocrine manifestations can also be a reason why someone has myopathy, for example they can have hypothyroidism or Cushing's disease. Neuromuscular manifestations can also cause myopathy like Lambert-Eaton or Manistania gravis. Remember that if a patient has isolated proximal muscle weakness, it's less suggestive of something like myasthenia gravis. And also patients with myasthenia gravis will have ocular such as ptosis or diplopia manifestations or facial weaknesses such as bulbar or muscle weakness that is worse on repetitive tasks. When you have a patient with something like polymyositis, it is an inflammatory myopathy that's very common in middle-aged women. But these women present with symmetrical proximal weakness and tenderness, but muscle atrophy itself is a very late finding, and they do not have features of hyperthyroidism such as tachycardia or weight loss. Proper treatment of hyperthyroidism usually will improve myopathies in patients.